Hello again Blenderheads and welcome to Blender version 2.82. There's been a whole heap of updates come out recently for Blender. A lot of them are really cool and there are a lot of them. So we're not going to have time to sit here and go through absolutely every single one of them. There's just too many in too many different areas. So what I want to talk to you about is the ones that specifically relate to character design. In this case, character sculpting. So you've probably uh, already seen some of the notes that have come out on the new remeshing tool. Uh, now, technically, the remeshing tool is a Blender 2.81 feature, but I believe there's been a couple of little overhauls that have been made to it. And frankly, when Blender 2.81 was released, I wasn't doing tutorials. So we might be a little bit late to the party, but we're going to cover it and we're specifically going to cover it in terms of character design. So if you've been if you've been following um, my tutorials on character design, where we design this Suzanne character, uh, you might recognize this little uh, setup here from the first chapter, where we basically just mashed a whole bunch of spheres and cylinders together and kind of came up with a very, very basic base mesh to then merge all of these objects together and use this as a, as a base for sculpting on to create our Suzanne head. So beforehand, I'm just going to go and duplicate these and stick them over to the side so we can do a bit of a comparison. In that first tutorial, the way that we merge all of this is to just grab all of our pieces here and we use the, uh, the bool tools add-on, which you can find under add-ons, under the, your preferences there, and if we just go bool you can see you've got object bool tools. And if we just expand this, you can see that the keyboard shortcut is Control shift b So if I just go Control shift b you can see that we get this menu here. What we want to do is go Auto Boolean and just go Union. And you can see here that our geometry's kind of changed and it's uh, mashed all of these pieces of geometry together. And what's really nice about using this is if we kind of just go on the inside of the mesh here, so we're looking at the inside of Suzanne's ear, you can see that if I just undo this, that ear kind of pokes through a little bit. And same deal with, you know, the uh, the muzzle there is poking through the head. And once we shift B, go union here, you can see that it hollows out this inside part. And this is what we want to then use as a base for sculpting. So from here, we go into our sculpt mode. Whoops, I've accidentally got the... Uh, Pose tool selected there. That's something for another tutorial. And from here we would turn on Dyn Topo, Control D, or you can just uh, access it from this menu up here. And from here we'd probably come in and sort of start painting some of these areas, these join areas. Because you can see that they're... You can still very much see uh, the, the original shapes underneath there. So I like to use constant detail. I'm just going to bring this up to about 10. And if you just sort of paint on these, you can see that it re, uh, recreates our underlying geometry. And we can sort of get rid of some of these strange edges. And I'm just realizing that I don't have symmetry turned on. But that's okay for this demonstration. So that's what we would have originally done. This is now kind of an old method. I wouldn't call it outdated by any means. This is still perfectly uh, a perfectly viable way of doing things. But you can see that once we join it, we still need to go through and kind of paint these join areas. So I would say that this method is maybe just a little bit slower, uh, depending on what you're trying to create. So if we wanted, let, let's say this was maybe more of a robot character, and we wanted some of these more sharp edges, this method might be slightly better. For creating a Suzanne character here, a monkey and more organic creature, you kind of want these more um, smoothed joins, so that's more like skin. If we go over to here, and select all of these objects, over here we're going to try and use the remeshing tool. So all we need to do for the remesher is select all of our objects, go Control J, to join them and if we go inside here you can see that yes this is just joined we haven't done any sort of boolean operation here so so we've still got bits poking through and this would be terrible to sculpt on so if we now go into sculpt mode and go to our remesh tool all we need to do is hit the remesh here and if we do that you can see that it automatically comes through and kind of 
bullions these and sort of runs a um, runs a, a kind of a smoothing operation, I guess, to a certain extent. And we get something that's a little bit more organic. But you'll notice that we've also lost a little bit of the shape, particularly down here through the neck. So what I found is that uh, this 0.01 is, again, depending on your model, the size of your model, I found that this is usually a little too big. So when we're dealing with voxels, uh, in fact, if I just go to the front view, it's using these grid spaces. So this here is, what's that? That's uh, 10 centimeters, I believe, by default. So when we hit this remesh, that's 0.1 meters, so 10 centimeters, and it's kind of making these quads, well, not necessarily all quads, but it's making these polygons roughly about that size. So if we go in here and we just say, let's go to 0.05, so halve that and hit remesh, you can see that we get a lot more detail and now we're starting to preserve some of that detail through the neck and obviously the lower you set that the more and more detail you start to preserve but you also start to preserve you can see we start to get this faceting where you can see the original underlying polygons so you kind of want to go for you know something in between and that clearly broke why did that break There must just be something. Oh, did I go 0 0.35? I think I went 0 0.35 rather than 0 0.035. And yet we get the exact same result. Um, yes, make sure that you've got your values correct in there. There we go. So you can see this is kind of a nice balance between that. Uh, there's still a little bit of faceting going on there. Maybe I'll just go with 0.4. Oh, there. 0.04 and remesh and that kind of gets rid of most of our faceting and then we can always come in here let's just make sure that I've got symmetry turned back on and we can kind of smooth out some of those things so you can see that this gives a much more organic result straight out of the box and I think that assuming that you're working with an organic model this way is probably a little bit faster just to get things sort of set up now in terms of going forward with your model, so once you've got this, let's just say that we'd taken this design to our director and the director had said, yeah, this is really good, but we're changing up the storyline a little bit. We're now going to make this a horror film or something and Suzanne here is going to become a demon monkey. So we want to try and give her horns. Can we give her horns? Actually, we can just keep using this model. If you're using the uh, remeshing method, if you were to try and add horns, you would use the uh, snake hook brush. Uh, keyboard shortcut is K for that. And you come in here and you'd go, yeah, horns are gonna come out from about here. And you kind of pull them out. And you can see that it's not, it's not adding any geometry. So we get this really um, stretched kind of thing going on. From here, you can remesh again keyboard shortcut I believe is control R but you can see that now we've pulled it already pulled it out we get these kind of jaggedy things sort of happening off to the side so you would kind of want to pull some of it out go control R and then kind of keep oops, kind of keep pulling it out until you kind of got the shape that you were after add a little bit of thickness there so you kind of end up using your remesher again and again and again, if, if you're looking to add these kind of big details, uh, let's say if you were just, you know, poking in some eye sockets, let's just turn the strength up a little bit there. You wanted to poke in some eye sockets, you can see that we get some stretching in here, but it's not as bad. And just doing a quick remesh is not too big a deal. But adding these larger scale details, I'd say it's a little bit slower. So what you can do if you wanted to create these large scale details is you can come over here and you can turn Dine Topo back on and it's really kind of cool that you can sort of use Dine Topo and Remesh well not quite at the same time if I go into Remesh here you'll notice that our Remesh is actually greyed out you need to turn Dine Topo off if you want to use it but we can flip back and forth between them very quickly 
So control D is what turns Dyn Topo on and off. If we were in our remesh mode, currently activated, and we just go, oh, we want to add some horns, we just go control D, turn that on, make sure that we've got the snake hook brush selected. And now when we come in here, you can see that we can create these horns fairly well. Um, I might need to turn my resolution up just a little bit. Let's go with 15. And you can see that as I pull these out, it's much, much easier, and I get geometry that just kind of builds itself as we go. And it means that I can kind of, you know, if I wanted to add some strange flippy sort of horns to it, it's much, much easier. And then once you've got something like this built, you can turn off your Dynamesh. Maybe just come in here and thicken these slightly. And then you can go with Control R. Whoops. Okay, because we're using a different model over here, it's kind of reset our voxel size over here. So let's just go and make that the same as it was before. And now when we go Control R, you can see that we now get nice, uh, smooth topology across the whole thing. There isn't really... It's not like Remesher is now better than Dyn Topo. They just have slightly different uses. And the fact that we can jump back and forth between them very, very easily with the uh, keyboard shortcuts, you know, Control D and Control R right on top of each other, means that we can jump back and forth between these tools really, really quickly. And it's kind of awesome. Now, this remesh option in here, the voxel remesher, remesher as it's called, isn't the only remesher that's been added. Uh, it's just the most, it's the easiest one to find when we're under the sculpting menu. So if we just jump over to our uh, object data over here, you can see that we have another remeshing tab. And if we open that up, you can see that we've got voxel selected by default, which is exactly the same as our remesher over here. You can see it has the uh, voxel size, adaptability, the same checkpoints through there. We also have the quad remesher. Now the quad remesher is significantly slower, but does give you slightly better geometry, better topology. It's still not good enough that you would then go ahead and use that topology to rig a character and um, hand it over to the animation team. But it is slightly, um, it's slightly cleaner, let's say. So let's just have a, a quick look at a quad flow. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of different options here. We'll quickly go through those in a second. Let's just let's just use the defaults for now and just go OK. And you can see that. And you can see the blender crashes. All right, I'm back after that annoying crash. Uh, need to take into account that these are relatively new tools. Occasionally there's some bugs in them. So I'm just going to quickly redo all of this, which fortunately won't take too long. Let's just go remesh 0.05, hit the remesh button. And you can see that we're kind of back to where we were before, minus the horns, but that's okay. We don't necessarily need a horned monkey to uh, to show off the quad remesher. So let's go and give this another try and uh, hope that it doesn't crash again. So you can see that this is significantly slower than the uh, than the voxel method, but once we've um, applied this, this does seem to be kind of going off at uh, some weird diagonals. Occasionally having like rotation or scale values in there can do that. But you can see that this is not, it, it's, it's slightly better than our voxel remesh. You can see that we sort of get these uh, weird kind of diamondy sort of shapes. And both of these in terms of just sculpting, perfectly usable. This is just using the quad remesher here is just slightly closer to what you might get for a final topology. Like I say, you still wouldn't be using this. You can see that we're going off at some weird diagonals here. Because this is incredibly simple, it's not doing too bad a job, but let's just go into sculpt mode for a moment here. I'm gonna go and add some eye sockets. I need to turn on symmetry again. And just go and make sure that's turned all the way up. I'm just gonna go and punch some eye sockets in here. Now ideally, if you had really good topology here, you'd end up with rings going around the eyes. 
that just allows them to blink a little bit better. On the other hand, if we go in here and use the quad remesher and just go OK, you can see that we're not getting those rings. I mean, it is trying, but it's not really overly successful. You can see though that now that we've added those eye sockets in, we've kind of got rid of that strange diagonal stuff that was going on. Like this topology is significantly better, but we're not getting what we want around the eyes. So again, this is perfectly fine for going forward with a sculpt, but it's pretty useless if you wanted to try and actually rig and animate this thing. So let's just go through a couple of the different settings in here, just so you can kind of go, okay, so what do all of these things do and, and why, why would I need them and when would I want to use them? Let's just, let's just start at the top. Let's just do a quick voxel remesh. You can see that we get, uh, again, we get these kind of diamond shapes randomly appearing. Again, for sculpting, not really too much of a problem, but if you just wanted to click fix poles and run that again, you can see that it kind of tries to get rid of all of those. We get weird diamondy random sort of shapes. We go voxel and all of a sudden we get something that's a little bit more like the quad remesher. Not perfect by any means, but this is, this is a lot more quad based. And depending on the exact shape of your model, that might be slightly uh, more useful for you. Smooth normals is pretty simple. It does exactly what it sounds like it does. Let's just make sure that that's still ticked. Uh, if I just turn off the overlays here, you can see that you can see all of our individual polygons. If I go voxel remesh, it's now fixed our poles and smoothed our normals. So you get a much smoother shape. And in fact, let's just go back, turn off fixed poles and go remesh. And you can see that once you smooth out the normals, you really can't tell too much of a difference. Generally speaking, I mean, if you read this here, produces less poles and better topology flow. Generally speaking, you want better topology flow. So I would usually keep that one on. Smooth normals is kind of up to your personal preference. I actually like to not, I like to work with uh, hard normals for uh, quite some time and then only turn on smooth normals once I'm getting closer to my final form. So I'd leave that one off for now. Uh, just personally, I would pretty much always have fixed poles on unless you had a very specific need not to. The preserve volume one is interesting. I'm actually gonna go and hide the Suzanne head here for a minute because this is a little bit easier to show with a sphere. So if we just go to the front view here, let's actually move this up to about here somewhere. So that you can see that the uh, the outer edges of our sphere here are all kind of on the grid. So if I now go into sculpt mode and go voxel remesh, and let's just turn preserve volume off, you can see that it shrinks just ever so slightly. On the other hand, if I turn preserve volume on, it tries to maintain that shape. This, uh, this voxel remeshing does smooth your mesh slightly, which kind of sucks it in a little bit. Again, generally speaking, I'd be keeping preserve volume on because you usually don't want your mesh to be shrinking. The final one is preserve paint mask. This is referring to your actual masks over here. So if you go and select that, uh, keyboard shortcut is M, and you go and paint in a mask, Let's say that you were, let's invert that. Let's say that you were ultimately looking to add some eyes or something in here, but you just wanted to do a quick remesh first. You can go voxel remesh. Oops, make sure that we still got preserved paint selected. Voxel remesh, and you can see that it's doing a remesh there. It's a very subtle remesh. Let's just, let's just say that you wanted this to be slightly more dense. You can go voxel remesh. It goes and remeshes everything, but it preserves your mask, which is kind of a neat little feature. Now, I really do want to emphasize because I've seen some other tutorials out there that have sort of been suggesting, particularly the quad remesher, you can you can use it to auto generate retopology, and you can, in terms of just 
regenerating topology to keep sculpting. But if I go back over here, you can see this is the um, the final retopology that we do in the uh, in the tutorial series, and you can see that we've got really nice um, edge loops and everything going around the mouth, going around the around the ears, going around the eye sockets. If it'll actually let me select it properly. And to get good animation, good deformation of your model, you really need these very specific rings. And as good as these quad remeshes and stuff are, you can see that, I mean, it's not terrible. And, and well, in fact, let's, let's just duplicate Suzanne here. And let's actually work with a one-to-one. -one. If we go and go voxel remesh, instead of curiosity, we have faces uh, just about 18,000. So let's go voxel, whoops, not voxel, quad remesh. Let's just go 18,000 and go OK. And that's quite a number of faces, so this will just take a brief moment. And now we're actually sort of comparing um, you know, a manual retopology to auto retopology, and you can see it's not doing an, a, a terrible job here. Like, it's close. It's really close for a, particularly for a an automatic method. But when we come in here and you go to the eyes, I mean, you can see that this part's just kind of ripped the whole eye apart. But there's you know, it's sort of tried to preserve the topology here. It's it's sort of got a ring going around here, but then it breaks at the top. Maybe if you had more topology, you could get something a little bit closer. But these rings just don't go around the mouth. So as good as this is to continue continue sculpting on, if you wanted to add more detail to this, you really can't use either the voxel or the quad if you want to then move this on to uh, the rigging and animation stage. Where you can potentially do this, where you can just maybe use the voxel or the quad remesh, in fact, let me just go and open up another scene. Okay, so what we've got here is a, a sculpt that I did, I don't know, about a year or so ago. Quick shout out to Piper, who does, who did the uh, the 2D artwork for this. Uh, I'll make sure that there's a, a link in the description somewhere because her artwork is just, she's awesome. So this was just a, a practice sculpt that I did, and, and I had no intention of using this thing for final animation. And you can see that, at least from a distance, this all looks pretty good. So this was something where I kind of did the, the automatic remeshing options, and didn't go in and do a, uh, a, final, a final remesh. Whoops, let's just make sure that we can see all the wireframe. And if you zoom in here, you can see that it's not the best topology. We've got some random stuff going off in random directions. And I mean, for the most part, it's not, it's not terrible, particularly from a distance. Like if, if you have no intention of rigging and animating your character, if all you want to do is practice sculpting and maybe put it in a pose, then there's absolutely no reason that you can't just use the, um, you can't just use your remeshing tools in here. Just keep in mind that they're imperfect. So if we zoom in, particularly underneath this frill, I know there's a lot of problems where you've got geometry that kind of penetrates into itself. Stuff, random vertices just kind of flying off. Uh, admittedly, this was using a, uh, a slightly older automatic retopology method. With the remesher and stuff, you probably won't get these. These are specific to the remesher I was using at the time. But you will still get nasty results. If I go in under here, you can really see that the whole thing just kind of goes to garbage. So I knew when I created this that it was going to be far enough away from the camera. I had no intention of rigging and animating this thing. And that these little mistakes that, that are getting made, I could fix in, uh, in Photoshop. And it's also worth noting that UV unwrapping this thing was was an absolute nightmare. 
if you're looking to take your characters to that next level, you definitely want to be uh, retopologizing, retopologizing manually for that final result. But if you're just looking to do a, a quick sculpt and, and pump something out, you can just use these automatic methods. Just don't take that character to the next level. There's still a whole heap of stuff that's that's worth discussing, particularly with a whole bunch of new tools that have come out. So I'm going to be releasing a, another tutorial relatively soon, we're going to create a character from, from scratch, and we're going to be using the, uh, the new remeshing tools. We're going to be using the new remeshing tools to, uh, to create it. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we're going to be playing a little game of Who's That Pokemon? <laughs>